Good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night. You're looking forward to a great day. For some reason, the live streaming is not working this morning. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happened. So uh, I'm recording the video now and I will upload it shortly. We don't have any birthdays today, but yesterday was my niece birth Brittany's birthday. So happy belated birthday to my sweet niece, Brittany. And on Wednesday, it was Mandy's birthday, our music director, uh, worship director, I should say. Um, it was her birthday. So happy belated birthday to Mandy. Uh, I will get both of you on my birthday list so I don't forget again. Um, the cat uh, photo of the day is called Top of the Morning to You, and these two little kitties, and it says, Kiss Me, I'm Irish. Um, so, Top of the Morning to You, and especially to Darling Poppy and Violet, who couldn't wake up on the wrong side of their, their bed in Basking Ridge, New Jersey home if they tried. The pair's human companion, Laura Napolitano, shares, Poppy and Violet are long-haired sisters who have been best friends since birth. However, she confesses, they may be fudging their ancestry a bit. They both say, please kiss us. We may not be Irish, but we are cuter than a leprechaun. They make an ironclad case there. Look at these kitties. Aren't they cute? Such sweet little girls. Cute, cute. Hard to go wrong starting your day with cute kitties, right? Okay, so we are looking at Psalm 51, 1 through 12. This is called No Excuses, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. That's in verse 3. Every new year, I resolve to apologize without making excuses. Similarly, this psalmist confesses their sins without making excuses such as blaming tricky situations, brutal circumstances, temptations, enemies, or even God. The psalmist also knows that only God can make them right by creating something new in verse 10. Luther believed this psalm demonstrates true repentance. True repentance is hard. Excuses are easy. Do I make excuses because I really don't want to admit my sin? Or do I wrongly think that I can make things right by myself without God? Instead, I need to recognize my sin, admit it, repent, ask forgiveness, change my behavior, and move on. We can get stuck in remorse if we turn away from God's ever-present grace. This gets in the way of us moving forward into loving service toward God and our neighbors. Maybe Lent is also a good time for resolutions. We can resolve to admit our faults without making excuses, recognize God's grace, and then move on to service. Let us pray. Renewing God, help us repent of our sins without excuses. Restore us to serve willingly with joy. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands, we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. I, I like this idea about um, Lenten resolutions. I mean, many of us give up something for Lent. We can call them Lenten disciplines. Um, but uh, I think it was Pope Francis who said, if you want to give up something, give up resentments. And if you, if you want to... I mean, he, he has this really positive list, um, and I can't think of what they all were. I'll see if I can find them really quick. But it was an amazing thing. Let's see, what to give up for Lent. Pope Francis. Uh, there. What do you, I found it. Aha. Uh -huh. What do you want to fast from this Lent? In the words of Pope Francis, fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. 
Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness to fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent. I think that's amazing. Um, if you if you want the list, all I did was Google what to give up for Lent, Pope Francis, and hit images, and it it popped right up. I mean, there he is. There's the list right there. What what a lovely thing. And you know, maybe my timing stinks because now we're in the fifth week of Lent. <laughs> we're almost done, and uh, or I guess the fourth week of Lent. Uh, but we're nevertheless, we're nearly there. But it's never too late to to fast from those things, and it's never too late to change our attitude about certain things. And you know, it's it's not easy. Um, but you know, like Tom Hanks says in A League of Their Own, if it was easy, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. And um, that's the standard to which we are called as followers of Jesus Christ. We are called to do it hard. We are called, that sounds terrible. Uh, we are called to walk the more difficult road. We are called to walk the higher road. We are called, we are called to do it better or maybe differently than the rest of the world where the rest of the world seeks revenge and, and retribution we seek uh, forgiveness and reconciliation. And man, that is not easy. It is not. And there are some situations, of course, where reconciliation is not appropriate. Forgiveness always is. It always is. Because forgiveness is about my heart, not about the person who hurt me. Forgiveness is about my heart and whether or not I'm going to be held captive to those feelings. So it is important. That's why Jesus calls us to forgive. And he also says that it's okay if it's a process. I mean, like I was saying yesterday, it's not always easy to forgive. <coughs> I struggle with it quite a lot. And it's okay if it's a process. Because, you know, Peter comes to him, I think it's Peter, comes to him and says, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? As many as seven times? And Jesus says, no, 77 times. Or in another gospel, it's 70 times seven. His point is you do it until you don't have to anymore. And it's not that we go, oh, well, you know, I've forgiven you 77 times. Okay, the 78th time you're out. No. Because again, forgiveness is not about the other person. The forgiveness is about what's happening in my heart and what's happening in your heart. And if if we're carrying around that stuff, that's that's not what God wants for us. God wants us to be happy, joyous, and free. And we cannot be any of those things when we're carrying around resentments. So perhaps, perhaps repenting from our bitterness uh, and grudges and um, the things that we hold on to. Maybe that's a place to start today. I don't know. I don't know what's happening in your life. I know that's always a good place to start in mine. There's always a stack of things that I push to the side and just say, I'm going to deal with that later. And I never do. Um, it's always a good thing to, to get rid of those things and, and start fresh each day. And Jesus will help us do that because he promised that he would. So happy Friday. Do what you can to bring some love and light into the world today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it so much. Have a great weekend and I'll see you back here on Monday.